In this tutorial, we're gonna check out a plugin called WP Rocket. It's one I personally use on my website and it will help us improve the site speed of the site we're looking at today. Now this site is built with Elementor and Elementor and all other page builders are not known for speed because they add a lot of extra code. They have so many features, they can do so much stuff they have to add code to be able to execute on all those things we want in a page builder. We're actually gonna go from 4.9 seconds to 1.1 seconds in load speed just by configuring WP Rocket. And it's super simple. My name is Bjorn Alpass from WP Learning Lab. If you like this kind of video, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And we're getting started right now. The site we're gonna speed up with this plugin is this site right here, Elementor 2019. It's a demo site I built with Elementor, and it's actually a complete website build that I've linked to in the description down below if you wanna see how I built this entire site. It's all Elementor, and because it's designed with the page builder, it's not as fast as it would be if we used plain HTML and CSS. It's just a reality of page builders. They create pages with a lot of code, which means they load slower. Before we get started, we're gonna get a baseline of how fast this page loads, or how slow it loads, by going to GT Metrics, my favorite, page load speed site at the moment. And I'm just gonna paste in the domain name, click on analyze. We can see our numbers down here. We're a C and a D, 4.9 seconds, 1.5 megabytes in total page size and 77 requests. All of these three things can be reduced in a few clicks using WP Rocket. And these things over here can be increased or improved within a few clicks in WP Rocket. So we're gonna install WP Rocket right now. It's only $49 for a single site license, which I have right now, a single site license. And there's also discounts throughout the year. So if you go to their site, I believe there's a sign up somewhere. Somewhere on this site you can sign up to be on their list and they quite often have discounts if you don't wanna spend the 49 to get it right now. So make sure you get the discount if you do want to. And then when you buy the plugin, you'll be given access to your dashboard which looks just like this. Uh, so you can download the Rocket or WP Rocket right here, and that goes onto your hard drive. Just pick a spot for it, click on Save, and then head into the dashboard of your website. Go to Plugins and Add New. Go to Upload Plugin. And then you can just drag and drop this new downloaded plugin right there and click on Install Now. Then click on Activate Plugin. Now we have a new menu item under Settings called WP Rocket. Let's click on there. And now we have the plugin installed. This is the main dashboard. And even without changing any settings, let's just test the site again in GT Metrics. So this was the original one that we did just at the beginning of this video. Let's not retest. We're gonna keep this one open and we're gonna do it again in a different tab so we can compare the two. We could also use the GT Metrics Compare feature, but I find that's not as much fun as doing it in a different tab. Paste in the URL again, click on Analyze. So now we're sitting at 2.8 seconds for load time, which is down from 4.9. Our file size is down, very small amount, requests down by two, and these guys haven't really changed either. So our biggest change so far, just by installing the plugin and activating it, doing nothing else, is our load time is a lot faster. So now if we go back into our plugin settings, we're gonna set a bunch of settings to make it go even faster. So the dashboard's a lot of general information about your account. You can clear your caches over on the right. You can become a tester right here if you want. There's frequently asked questions that are answered here. Once we get into the cache section, that's where we start really getting into the settings of the plugin. Let's click on cache. Some of these settings, they can break your site and you'll get warnings when you check those settings and then you can decide to carry on with those or not. So it's always a good idea to back up your site before you make any of those drastic setting changes, but you get a warning, like I said, we'll see that in just a minute. So for the mobile cache, I like to enable cache for mobile devices because the faster, the better. I don't usually enable cache for logged in users because on my site I have courses and if there's a cached version of the course, they're not gonna see the, the new version if it's been updated. So usually for logged in users, which is generally a smaller percentage of visitors on your site, I don't have the cache stored for them. There's no SSL on this website, so I'm not going to apply this, but you can easily check this box to apply the SSL cache. And the cache lifespan of 10 hours is good enough for me. You can change it to whatever number you want. You can have hours, minutes, or days. 10 hours is pretty good for me. So I made no changes there, but if you made changes, click the save changes at the bottom. File optimization, this is where we start compressing the file size. So the metric that we see here, total page size, this is where we start reducing that by minifying HTML, combining Google Fonts, 
removing query strings from static resources. Those are things like, if we go into the source code of the website, right click on any open area of the site and click on view page source. The query strings on URLs are things after this question mark. So for this URL, question mark VR equals 5.2, that is a query string. And those make your site load a little bit slower. And there's a lot of them. As you can see, every URL here has the version. And that's also for cache busting. That's why they're there. So if you have an update to this CSS file, then there's going to be update to the version number because the file name stays the same. It's going to be update to the version number, which then forces the site to reload this instead of loading a cached version. So that's the reason they're there. And turning those off makes your site go a little bit faster. So I usually remove those. We can minify CSS files. This is one of the ones that can break your site. And here's the warning. So if you're concerned, back up your site. I've linked a tutorial in the description down below that shows you how I back up all my sites. I'm just going to click on activate because this site is part of that backup process. So I'm not very concerned. I'm going to combine CSS files by checking this box. You can exclude CSS files if you know that some files should not be cached. You can exclude them here in this box. I'm going to optimize CSS delivery. You can have a fallback URL for critical CSS just in case the optimized delivery doesn't work. Same options for JavaScript files. We can combine them. Sorry, we can minify them, then combine them. We can exclude inline JavaScripts. We can exclude specific JavaScript files. And we can load deferred, which means that they load later on in the loading process. And that's actually one of the most common things I see with websites. They have a problem with it's in here. Here, defer parsing of JavaScript, which this site had before I installed this plugin. It was at 70. So this means that the JavaScript is causing the site to load slower because it's loading synchronously, meaning it has to load completely before the rest of the site loads. There is also asynchronous JavaScript that will load on its own at the same time as the site loads. So that's not a problem. The problem is the synchronous ones, and this helps with that. I'm going to click on Save Changes at the bottom, and we're going to check out the Media tab because media is very important. Lazy load helps with load time. One of the number one causes of slow websites is images and big images and lots of images. So this enables images to load as they're needed, not immediately when the page loads. Meaning when you scroll down the page, you'll see images appear. They're not loaded already when you scroll down the page. I'm going to enable that for images. I'm going to enable for iframes and videos. I'm going to replace the YouTube iframes with preview images. I'm going to disable emojis because I don't need them on my site. I'm going to disable WordPress embeds. This is something that could break your site here as well. This is when you're embedding things like, say, Google Fonts or the Beamer app or something that gives you JavaScript from their site that you paste into your website, and then it loads something into your site. This is stopping that. So if you know you have those things on your site, you either have to have them be whitelisted or just don't turn this on. I'm going to click on Save Changes, and then we're going to head over to Preload. Preload means that you're caching files before a visitor comes. Most caching plugins, if there's a page that's not in the cache, they'll wait till the visitor goes there, generates the page, and then they'll cache that page. Whereas preload will cache the page right now, after we click save here. And so it's not waiting for visitors to come and do it. So the very next time a visitor comes, they're going to see the cached version and see it faster. So I'm going to activate preloading. You can activate the sitemap based preloading, have to enter your sitemap, and then it just goes through your sitemap, and then it preloads all those pages. I'm just going to keep it on this option right here. I'm not going to set the prefetch DNS requests in my case because I know I don't, I don't use that. And if you're not sure what that is, then you likely don't use it either. So don't worry about that. It's fairly advanced. Click on Save Changes. I'm going to go to Advanced Rules. Here you can set URLs to never be cached. If you know things are being updated a lot, you can set those pages to not be cached. You can have never cached cookies by setting the cookie ID, never cached user agents. So when certain user agents come to your site, they never see a cached version. For example, you can enter the Google bot in here and they never see a cached version of your site, always the newest version, just in case there's a difference between the two, which happens sometimes. You can specify URLs that are always purged whenever you publish a page or a post. Specify that here. You can cache certain query strings. You can specify those here. And I didn't make any changes here. This is, again, fairly advanced stuff that most people aren't going to use. So I'm not making any changes there. Let's click on Database. Here we can clean up things like revisions, auto drafts, trash posts, spam comments, trash comments, expired transients, all transients. 
You can optimize database tables. You can schedule automatic cleanup if you want to do this stuff on a regular basis automatically because these things happen as you're working on your site. And right now, most of these are zero. There's one auto draft, 23 transients. I'm just going to purge those two. There's so few, they likely don't even make a difference. Click on optimize. This is another one of those things where you want to back up your site before you're optimizing. But I'm not too concerned because my site's already backed up. So we have no auto drafts now. We still have 12 transients. So those 12 are likely still required by something. So the plugin just leaves those in there. You can integrate a CDN. So here you would enter a C name for the CDN that you're using. For example, if you use Max CDN, you would get the information from your Max CDN account and put it in here. For Cloudflare and Securi CDN, there's actually an add-on built into the plugin. So you don't have to use this C name section. You can exclude certain files from your CDN if you want to. So next is the Heartbeat. The Heartbeat API in WordPress basically checks with the server for changes. And it will do this when someone comes to your site. When, as soon as someone visits, there's going to be a heartbeat set up between that visitor's session and your server. And every 15 to 60 seconds, it's going to ping your server to see if something's changed, something needs to be updated on the site, see if there's some kind of cron job that has to run. And that's what heartbeat does. Disabling heartbeat completely can break certain plugins. Elementor, for example, will be broken if you disable Heartbeat. Another important thing Heartbeat does is auto-saving your posts. So as you're working on a post, you'll notice that they're being auto-saved. That's Heartbeat doing that. So you can choose to reduce its activity to every two minutes instead of 15 to 60 seconds. And that will make it so it doesn't run as often, which saves server resources. So by default, these are all set to reduce activity. You can set it to do not limit or disable your choice. We're going to keep them all at reduced. Click on Save Changes. Now we're going to check out the image optimization. Here you can install a plugin called Imageify. It's created by WP Rocket. It's great for reducing the file size of your images. There's also a bunch of other tutorials on my channel for different ways of reducing image size, if you want to check those out. For the add-ons, we have Google Tracking add-on, Facebook Pixel add-on, Varnish add-on. So if you find you using any of these three, you can turn these on and then it helps them load faster and do things better on your site. And there's also Rocket add-ons, Cloudflare, and Securi, which helps us with our CDNs. And we're going to do that in just a minute. But first, we're going to check out the tools. These tools allow you to export the settings and import them. If you want to import a different site, you can roll back to an older version of the plugin if any issues are caused by an update. And now that we've set all these things, we haven't done the CDN yet, but we've done quite a few things and we've saved our work. Now we're going to see if we've improved on these numbers just by setting some simple point and click settings in WP Rocket. So let's open another tab of GT Metrics, paste in our URL again, click on Analyze. So we have a pretty good improvement over our latest one. So our most recent was 2.8 seconds. This was when we just installed the plugin, didn't change any settings. It was a 2.8, 1.53 megabytes for the file size. 75 requests, HTTP requests. Now we're down to 1.1 seconds, 900 kilobytes, which is 0.9 megabytes, and 17 requests. That's a pretty big reduction. Our Y slow score is now an A, our page speed score can still be improved. And there's really one setting. This is our page speed scores right here. There's one thing really taking it down, and that's serving scaled images. That just means that the images I'm using on the site are not the exact same size as their display window. For example, these images here are actually larger than this display area. So this is, this is the display area where you see the image, but the image is bigger, it's being scaled down, and that means that the file size of that image could be reduced if we actually reduce that image right to this specific size instead of having the website scale it down. And that is what this complaint is. And that's the only thing pulling down our page speed score. If we fix that, this would also be an A because everything else is 92 or higher. So this is the only thing bringing down that average. And like I said, Y slow is already 90. If we compare this to our very first scan before we installed WP Rocket, the most important one as always is 1.1 seconds load time because people really care about the load time. So let's go to our original and the original was 5.9 seconds load time. And I know that when you retest a site, this number changes, this load time changes quite often based on the load time of the site at the time of the scan. 
But there's no way without doing some drastic changes like installing WP Rocket and configuring it that this will reduce to 1.1 just by continually retesting. So this is a major improvement in all metrics across the board by installing WP Rocket and just those point and click things that we did. And like I said at the beginning, this site is built with Elementor, which means it's not fast out of the box because page builders add a lot of code to the site. So this is major improvements that we're seeing across the board on all these stats. And if we check out their pricing one last time, a single site license is $49. There's discounts throughout the year. And it's a plugin I recommend, it's a plugin I personally use. There's a link in the description down below to go to this site to check out this plugin. It is an affiliate link, so if you end up buying through that, I make a few dollars. The plugin is not more expensive for you, and I really appreciate the support. Helps me keep making these videos. And so if you like WP Rocket and you like what you saw with these performance improvements, give it a go. So that's how we configure WP Rocket to make major improvements in our site speed. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And next up is this video right up here that shows you how to build this site that we just improved the site speed on in its entirety right here. So check out that video. It's actually probably up here. And down here is the one that YouTube thinks you should watch. And until next time, my name is Bjorn Allpass in the WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.